Jazzcast Pros. Hello and welcome back to High Vibe Table Talks. I'm so excited to introduce my guest today, Megan Hansel. Welcome to High Vibe Table Talks. Ah, uh, I'm so excited to be here. I feel so honored that we get to have this conversation today. If you're a woman contemplating your next move, you found the perfect podcast to empower your self-growth journey. Welcome to High Vibe Table Talks, the podcast to help you, the cautiously ambitious woman, remove mental barriers and take action now so that you can achieve your high vibe desires. I'm so excited because we're going to be talking about the brain and neuroplasticity and how in our heads we can get as entrepreneurs and how we can kind of step outside of that. But first, who is Megan and who do you serve? That, that's a tricky question because Megan is a lot of things. Uh, <laughs> Megan's a wife and a mom, and I love to serve women who want more and who don't, don't want to stay in that stuck feeling and who have a desire for growth, but there's something in their heads that's telling them that they can't, like they're, they're stuck. And that's who I want to serve. That's who I want to help and encourage and impact. I love that you started out with that because I think that understanding that that thought process is normal and happens to a lot of us and doesn't mean because those fears and thoughts come up doesn't mean we shouldn't still pursue it. I think if you feel that friction, that's exactly the direction you need to go. Yeah. I think everybody should do something scared every day. Like you have to live in that because that's actually how you create new neural pathways sometimes. And I know that we're going to get into that here shortly, but if you're not doing stuff outside of your comfort zone, there's no room for growth. You only grow outside that comfort zone. And so that's what I try to encourage. Yes. Let's dive right in to the concept of neuroplasticity. I had not heard much of it before you and I talked, but I think it is so fascinating. Can you tell us what that means and why it's important? Yeah. I'm going to like uh, quickly read a little summary, and then I'm going to share a story that I think makes everybody understand it in a way that you're like, okay, yes, I can apply that to all areas of my life. So neuroplasticity is kind of like a superpower that our brain has. It means that our brain can change and grow when we learn new things or practice something over and over again. It's kind of like a muscle that gets stronger the more we use it. So if we keep learning and practicing new things, our brains can get really strong and help us do really amazing things. Now, a way to think about it is neural pathways in your brain can be created if you constantly do something over and over and over again. So let's say I want everybody listening to think of your front yard right now. If you think of your front yard, if you have, or maybe your childhood front yard or whatever you grew up with where there was grass, if you walk over something one time, a pathway is not going to be created. If you walk over something two times, a path isn't going to be created. But if you take that same path every single day to your front door instead of the sidewalk, what's going to happen over time? You're going to create a path that's going to kill the grass and literally get you from point A to point B. And it's going to be the easiest way. You're not having to create this trail. It's there. It's a path. That's what happens in our brain. That's neuroplasticity. It's the ability to be able to change your thoughts at any given time because you're going to choose truth over whatever you're telling yourself. Mm, That is so good. And it's so interesting because I think a lot of times when we try something new, we're like, that was really hard. And Mm. I love the idea that the more you practice it, the easier it's going to get. Mm -hmm. But it's going to feel uncomfortable. And I think that's the thing that everybody has to realize is in the beginning, anytime you try anything new, it's uncomfortable. Like if you have a toddler, teaching them how to tie their shoes is obnoxious and you're like, oh, this is not that hard, right? But it's because over time we could do it. We could tie our shoes by having a conversation and doing 12 other things because it's a habit. But in the beginning, it's hard. It's the same thing with neural pathways. We have this thing inside our brain called a negative bias, and that negative bias is that your negative thoughts are going to stick more than your positive thoughts, your truthful thoughts, whatever that is, and so, and because your brain is always trying to protect you, and so if something feels unsafe, your brain goes to that, I need to protection mode, this is not worth it, and we start telling ourselves all of these self-doubts, self-talk, 
Can I share a statistic with you guys? Is that okay? Please. According to the National Science Foundation, an average person has about 12,000 to 60,000 thoughts per day. And of those, 80% are negative and 95% are repetitive thoughts. So that means we repeat 95% of our 80% negative thoughts. And that means that we hear ourselves speak negatively to ourselves more often than anything else because the loudest person in our head is always us. So if that's true, the negativity sticks. And that's why I'm so big on neuroplasticity is I don't have to stay that way. I don't have to keep believing that thought process. Positive thoughts are like nonstick pants where you know you know when somebody says something to you that's really positive and it's a compliment, you're like, oh, thanks. And then you like forget about it. Yeah. Versus if somebody tells you something negative, you never forget. It's like the bro. <laughs> it stays with you forever and ever and ever. I bet every single person has a story about when they were little, when somebody called them something mean or said something bad about their body, and they still to this day hear that in their heads and play that out over and over. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't have to be that way. We yeah. can change that thought. In working with a lot of entrepreneurs, what I have to ask them sometimes is, would you ever say to your best friend what you just said to yourself? Mm. And they always say, never. Then why are you saying it to yourself? And what you just said is they're not only saying it to themselves once, they're saying it to themselves thousands of times Mm -hmm. every single day, day in and day out. Mm -hmm. Neural pathways are created. That's why. It's the easiest track. It's the easiest road that's already been paved. And so that's why we take it but we can create new ones to replace those. Mm -hmm. If someone's listening to this podcast and says, I didn't even realize I was saying so many negative things to myself, what are some steps they can take to change those neural pathways? My favorite way to explain it to people is to put your thoughts on trial. And the only way to do that is to write out your thoughts throughout your day. And ask yourself, is this a true factual thought? Is this or is this a circumstance that I'm telling myself that's happening? Is this a story I'm telling myself or is this fact based? You have to journal it out because once you get it out of your head, you're like, wait a minute, that doesn't seem true. Or when your clients are telling you, I feel this way, and as soon as they say it, they're like, huh. That, that doesn't seem right, but it's been living in their head rent-free. These negative thoughts are just living there, constantly repeating themselves. And once you say it or write it, you can tell the truth. And so I think the best way to do that is to literally journal it out every single day. Take your thoughts captive and then replace it with truth and find things that are true that you can speak over that at any given time. Yeah understanding the science behind a good brain dump. I love brain dumping. I have a workbook called From Vision to Fruition, and the first part is brain dumping. So can I think you know more about the science of why that works. Can you tell us about that? Oh, boy. I love a brain dump, as you all know. Brain dumping is getting all of your thoughts and your clutter and your anxiety and your stressors out onto paper. And there are lots of different ways to brain dump. My favorite way is to write down everything on my to-do list, everything that's keeping me up at night. I mean, we're women. You know sometimes how you wake up in the night and you're like, panic. I have to do this. I have to do this. I have to do this. If you can brain dump and get it out the night before or when you first thing in the morning, it actually helps you de-stress because a lot of times what happens is you realize, I don't have that much or I can handle all of this. But I love stories because it helps people understand, I think, a little bit better. Do you ever walk into your to your closet and feel like it's cluttered and you're like, absolutely not. I'm not doing this. I'm going to pick up what's on the ground. I can't even deal with this. And the stress of it all just makes you turn back around and find something off the ground. Yeah. Okay. So brain dumping is that same concept. Your brain is constantly on overload because we try to keep all these things in our head. And when we brain dump, it's like taking everything out of your closet, everything out and reorganizing it. And then how do you feel when you reorganize your closet? Oh my God, the best. It's so good. Yeah. You're like, I am Beyonce. I can do anything (laughs) at any time because I feel so good. You're after you do a brain dump, you will have that same exact feeling because it it is proven to de-stress you and help you 
recognize what is priority, what is not, what is feeling heavy, what doesn't need to feel heavy. Um, And it just helps you really look at things in a logical perspective versus just living in your head. I like to dump it all out, sort it out, prioritize it, and then put it into like a checklist slash like my daily binder, whatever I have, my daily planner. Yeah. I never thought about it in that way because, I mean, physically decluttering and organizing, that process when you do it in person, it's messy at first. Taking everything out of your pantry, your kitchen Mm -hmm. looks like a (laughs) mess for a while. Yes. Yes. And then it looks so much better, but you have to go through that messy process before you can get to this neat looking organized space. I love that you said that about the pantry because a lot of times we find old crap that we don't need in there, right? Mm-hmm. And we're like, why do I even have this? And sometimes when you <laughs> brain dump, you have a thought that you're like, this doesn't matter. Why have I been stressing about it? But you needed to get it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. So good. I say often that should is a shame word. And I think that we live a lot with shoulds. I feel like I should be doing something better. I feel like I should be doing something different. I feel like I should be like others, whether we see it in our life. I think that social media creates a lot of should shame cycles. How do we change these shame stories that we tell ourselves? Mm. Okay. I love – it's interesting that you put it like that because I've actually never heard it in that way, but it goes back to that same exact thing of is this a story that I'm telling myself or is this true? There's a guy named Bob Heilig and there's also – there's tons of people out there that have talked a lot about this, but it's this idea of red light thinking versus green light thinking. And it's the exact same concept of putting our trials or our our thoughts on on trial and – You need to go and ask yourself, is this a story I'm telling myself that has facts and truth, or is this something that I am just telling myself because it feels comfortable and because I'm in self-protection mode? A lot of times we tell ourselves, I can't achieve that goal. I am not capable of that, yada, yada, whatever that thing is. And the truth is, is that we just don't know how to take bite-sized steps to get there. And so we just, our body goes into protection mode and it says, no, you can't. You're not smart enough. You're not worthy enough. You're not capable. And none of those things are true. And so if you can write that out, can I hit this goal? What are the steps that I need to get to get there. What do I need to take? What daily steps can I do? Reverse engineer it. And wham, bam, now you have truth that it is possible. And you wouldn't have gotten there unless you wrote it out and said, is this true? Is this false? And then wrote out the true story that is possible. You got to do both. You got to write it out and then you got to name your truth that you know is possible. Mm -hmm. Does that answer that? It does. Yeah. And I'm One thing I'd like to dive into around that topic is when you talk about reverse engineering, I think that we pigeonhole our own brains to say someone else is doing it in this way, and so I should be doing it in that same way. Like I should be able to get up and go for a jog every morning, but our brain isn't wired naturally that way, and so we have to reverse engineer in a way that fits our, supports our brain. Mm. Yeah. It's like you have to create rhythms and habits. That's what I like to talk about are rhythms. What rhythm can you do to create the results that you want, right? If you want to be the morning person, then put your sports bra on the night before, put your shoes by the door and make it so much easier for your body to say yes, because your body's, your brain is going to tell you, no, 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 no. No sugar, that bed is comfy, it is dark out, you do not want to do that. I love that you put it in the framework of rhythms, because I feel like sometimes habits can feel masculine and hard and structured, and sometimes we can, I know I personally like push away from that because I want it to be flow and feminine and soft, and so I really like that idea of like a rhythm. Yeah. 
Rhythm is, it is, I love the way that you said that. It's like, it is a feminine way, but it, if you, I am not an organized person. I am literally the hottest mess express. That term was made for me. My friends call me hurricane because I'm crazy, but I find that I can breathe better when I set rhythms for our family and flow for our family that um, makes it easier for everybody else. When mama brain dumps, everybody else is happier. When mama does cleans off the kitchen counter, every everybody's happier because that rhythm puts me in a better mood and it flows into the rest of our family. Yeah, I really like that a lot. This is a kind of a silly example, but I always thought like, oh, everybody runs their dishwasher at night, so I should run my dishwasher at night. But it created so much friction in the morning because now I'm trying to make breakfast with a full dishwasher. And so I have nowhere. So now first thing in the morning, my sink is cluttered. And that's a physical manifestation of what you're talking about of like, I get frustrated with a cluttered sink first thing in the morning and it just creates unneeded stress during my day. So I started running my dishwasher in the middle of the day so I can empty it while I'm cooking dinner. And now I have an empty dishwasher to put morning dishes in. And it's so silly, but it's like a simple tweak. I think nowadays everybody tries to be, like you said on social media, everybody tries to be a morning person. And if that is not your body's way of doing things, there are certain things that you can't change. I am a morning person. I will get up at five and do all of the things because I feel so energized and I can accomplish the world. But by 7.30 PM, I am an idiot. There is no more left. I cannot do anything past eight not nine. I mean, I'm dumb at that point. And I know like my best is not at night, but that doesn't mean that people that work best at night should try to be the morning when they're not their best. And so I think that's really, I love that you're like, Hey, the best for me is in the afternoon. That's a beautiful rhythm that you have created. Finding a way to create rhythms, routines, rituals. And I love adding rhythm into that, that support our brain and work with our brain versus against our brain because of, again, going back to the should shame comparison is just, that's how we live our best lives. And one thing that has become clear to me in producing this podcast, and then I want to get into kind of your next venture, is the ripple effect that people can have by truly stepping into their most authentic selves. And that's where I think we create the biggest change, but it's reflecting back inward versus outward. It just naturally has that effect. Do you have any stories about like you stepping into your most authentic self and how that has kind of shaped your world? It's interesting that you've been, you're asking that because I really feel like people are created for purpose and only you can live that purpose that you were truly created for. And we constantly look to the right and to the left to be what everybody else is, but nobody can be you like you are created to be. If we're trying to be somebody else, we don't get to authentically be the helper that we were created to help or whatever. I will say, I think the thing that has helped me become who I was created to be is to chase the scary things and to do the things that make me the most nervous because it allowed me to identify, wow, I really enjoy this really scary thing. And I actually am very gifted in it. And I know that it's not because of anything I've done. It's just because that's my natural disposition for who I was created for. And so To answer that, I think like it took some scary steps along the way. And I think that is what's so neat about life is that we are given so much opportunity and free will to be able to decide what we can and cannot do. And it's the comfort. I always say this and I've already said it once, but you never grow inside a comfort zone. And so if there's something inside of you that thinks like, hey, I should be chasing that, but I'm too scared, then that's the thing that you should be chasing. Because we are supposed to do things scared. Scared does not mean bad. Hard does not mean bad. It just means that it's going to be hard. And when you achieve that goal, you're going to feel so much greater because you are so proud of yourself. And you can do little steps, right? Like showing up for the gym at a new gym that's really scary for the first time. Like that is horrifying. New gym, new people, you're like, oh boy, this ain't going to go good. But just showing up. And then guess what? You're proud of yourself for showing up. And then you can do the next hard thing. Yeah. I always like using like exercise as an example because it's something we all understand. Um, And you're going to use new muscles in new ways and create those new neural pathways. And so there's definitely a coupling of 
pivoting and trying something new that you feel scared but excited to do and you're walking across that grass for the first time and it's not going to be smooth and clear and worn out. Mhm. That's rich. Yeah, they're they're very connected. Mhm. I think having awareness that that's part of the process is what can keep people away, but if they're like, "Oh, Megan said this was going to happen and now here it is and I'm prepared and I understand." And that goes into my next question, which is your new podcast which launches tomorrow. So exciting. Yeah. So exciting. It's called She's Intentional. I love that title so much because creating space for us to be intentional and whatever that looks like is how we change our world. So tell us about She's Intentional, the title, all the things about your new podcast. This is a dream, a like a dream that I've had for years and years and years and years. And um, I'm doing it with my best friend, who told me she would never do a podcast with me. And so it's like <laughs> truly a dream when I say we're finally doing it. But She's Intentional was designed f- to help women create rhythms in their lives to help them identify places that they can really be more intentional instead of just skating by. A lot of times we can just get into the mundane and we can – just feel so stuck. Like that's the word I always go back to because I've lived there. And um, I Rory Vaden says, you're best capable of serving the person you once were. And so of all of these things that we're talking about is basically for old Megan and Julie who struggled being the toddler mom, the entrepreneur. We were raising businesses and babies at the same time. And we realized that we could be successful as long as we were intentional but we had to choose to be intentional in all of the moments, not just in our businesses, not just in mom, not just like we had to choose intentionality all of the time. So we are launching it and it's going to be hopefully very impactful and helpful for women as we share failures and wins along the way. I love that so much. And one of my episodes, I had my my podcast producer on and we were talking about how in creating a podcast, you have to speak to younger versions of yourself and say what you needed to hear. So I love that you're echoing that same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. So I want to get into the lightning round questions. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's. I love fast. What is a must read book? Take the Stairs by Rory Vaden. What does creativity mean to you? <laughs> I am the least creative person on the face of this planet. But for me, the thing that I love to create is like ideas. Like I can constantly speak life into other people and identify what they're best at. And so I can give them ideas to go chase. That's as Mm -hmm. creative as I get. So I didn't think I was a creative person for a long time because I can't like sing, draw, act the typical ways. Again, that society tells us this is what creativity looks like. And so the fact that you have found the way that you can manifest creativity in ideas is is beautiful. You're so kind. What is the best piece of advice you've ever received? Honestly, mine's going to be faith-based, and that is to know that you were called for purpose and created for something that only you can do. And once you can identify what your identity is and who the creator calls you, you can chase anything that you were created to do. Mm -hmm. I love that. It's so powerful. What is something that is on your bucket list? I... I'm working towards becoming a keynote speaker and I want to speak and I've had the opportunity to do so like in my world, uh, speak to like 15,000 people for a short amount of time. But I would love to like fill a stadium and speak to women and have them leave feel like that was so valuable. And I now know that I can go chase my dreams and that I can do whatever that thing is inside of me. Like I want them to leave with so much belief belief and hope in themselves and what they're Mm. capable of. And what is the coolest shit you've done in the last year or are currently working on? One of the coolest things that I did was in Cancun, I was able to speak 
uh, to a group of like top leaders in our company. And we created like this new way of doing something. So the company took my idea and we shared it. And it's kind of laughable because it was such a silly idea. But the fact that the company took it on and was like, we're rolling this out. And so then I got to do like a promo video in I can't even pronounce the hotel's name, but everybody was like, oh my gosh, you just ha- were in the presidential suite of a Walder for something. I I don't even know. I didn't. I was spilling coffee while I was there. Like I had no business being in this suite, but <laughs> it was a lot of fun. We had so much fun in Cancun then. That's amazing. That's awesome. As an entrepreneur, a woman, a mother- What do you want to model for your children in this role in this life? Oh, that is so rich. I want my girls to know that if they work hard enough that they truly can't accomplish anything, that they don't deserve something to be handed to them because they think they want it, that they can work and achieve anything anything that they want, as long as they put the effort in and as long as they fight for it, that it will and can be done. Mm -hmm. So that no one needs to give them permission to go after their dreams. They have that inside themselves. Yeah. And I don't want them to think that they deserve something for nothing. I want them to know that it takes hard work and effort because that's where the that's the journey that makes you who you are. It's not the receiving all the accolades or getting whatever it is that you quote unquote work for. It's the journey along the way that creates you to be the person that you become. And Mm -hmm. without the chase, they're going to miss out on the beautifulness of the growth. Mm -hmm. And it's walking across that front lawn that 10,000 times. Yeah. It's not walking across it once. It's, it's, it's killing the grass. Yeah. Where can people find Megan? If you want to listen to the podcast, it's launching tomorrow anywhere. Uh, it's She's Intentional. You can find that podcast. Uh, there's an entire new brand that's launching from that, which is She's Intentional.co. That's our Instagram. And then if you just want to follow me for funsies on the gram, it's Megan Hansel. Or it's actually Meg.Hansel on Instagram. Perfect. We will put all of that in the show notes <laughs> to make sure people can find you because I know that people are going to hear this and be like, I need more Megan in my life. I need more intentionality. So very, very cool. If you like this podcast, High Vibe Table Talks, don't forget to subscribe. We will see you next week. And remember that big dreams and small steps will transform your life. 